Hello, we're Janet and Andrew Sweet. We've got two kids, Ellen who's five and Nathaniel who's three, and we live in Oxfordshire. We work with Wycliffe Bible Translators. Um, I was a student back in Aberystwyth in the early 2000s studying international politics. Um, on completing my course, I really felt that it was God-given, um, and so I set about seeing where I could put it to use. Um, I spoke with Wycliffe Bible Translators, and after some training, I went into a project funding assignment in Kenya. Today, we want to give you a brief introduction to the Ministry of Bible Translation, some insights into what we both get up to, and some ideas on how you can be praying. Imagine a Bible banquet. At one end of the table sit English speakers with countless translations of the Bible, more than could ever be consumed. Welsh speakers are seated somewhere down in the middle of the table, but down at the far end sit 1.5 billion people who are yet to have the complete Bible in a language they understand well. This is Bible poverty and it stands in the way of people being transformed by the Gospel. Together with our global partner organisations, it is our prayer and desire that in the next 15 years, 99.96% of people worldwide will have access to at least the New Testament in a language that they understand well, and that in every language of the world, some scripture will be available. Isn't that something amazing that might happen in this generation? I work as a scripture typesetter, though just one day a week since Nathaniel's not yet at nursery school. We lived in Kenya for about eight years, so I still continue to work mostly for the Kenyan partner organisation, Bible Translation and Literacy. A scripture typesetter gets involved at the point where the Bible translators have finished translating and checking the part of the Bible that they want to publish. I help them with the final edit of the text, running lots of checks to find errors and inconsistencies in things like punctuation, spelling, formatting markers and footnotes. This is the sort of thing I'll see on my screen as I check for consistency across the books. In this case, I've spotted, for example, that the team have used different formatting markers for the titles in the introductory text, so the two parts of the book will not come out looking the same. I often also help the team choose helpful pictures and prepare Bible maps. Then I do a first draft layout for the team to read through and troubleshoot any technical problems that show up. For example, accents over letters not appearing in the right order. Then we sort out any corrections that need to be made and do the final layout. Since we returned to the UK, I've worked with Wycliffe's people team. Um, I run the application process through which people come to serve with Wycliffe overseas and I'm blown away by the amazing people that God brings. Uh, they've got tremendous skills and giftings. Um, I also look after our employed staff team in the UK um, and what they do is they are supporting members and projects that are taking place around the world. Lockdown has thankfully not been too difficult for us as a family. Our children have loved having all the extra time to play together and we've all been getting fitter as they've both learned to ride their bikes without stabilisers. Ellen is just finishing reception at school so they didn't expect much in the way of homeschooling. However, we've been very aware of the challenges that friends in Kenya have faced during the lockdown measures there. A majority of people work in the informal sector and so many have struggled to pay rent and feed their families. One friend had everything taken by bailiffs. We were worried that COVID-19 could sweep through slum neighbourhoods and we're very thankful to God that this has miraculous, miraculously not happened. However, the lockdown in Kenya is now being lifted to enable people to work again and so the risks are rising again and the health system is not very strong. We're praying that Africa will be spared the worst of it. As an organisation, we saw a huge influx of mission workers returning to the UK uh, on repatriation flights in the midst of the unknown. Um, Distance working was already quite common in our worlds. Um, Janet and I even got engaged over Skype almost a decade ago. And so we're encouraged to see more people than ever working with Bible translation teams overseas from bases here in the UK. Uh, one verse that I have seen several times over the last few months has been Acts 12 verse 24. But the word of the Lord continued to increase and spread. This was written in the context of King Herod's persecution of the early church. But it reminds me that yes, God, will make himself known to all people, hopefully in our lifetimes, despite COVID-19. And the verse that's been on my heart during lockdown is Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. There are so many ways of meeting together, including Zoom, and so we are really thankful for you reaching out to us and praying for us in our work today. Yeah, um, three things to pray as we leave. Um, Please pray for COVID-19 to be managed well across Africa, um, where there is little access to decent healthcare. And pray for Janet as she works on typesetting the books of Ruth and Acts in the Water language of Kenya. 
and uh, pray for me uh, that Wycliffe would continue to have people drawn by God into the ministry of Bible translation, um, that all peoples might have access to the Bible in the language that they understand well. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you.